<laughs> All right, so Phoenix One is a system that I wanted to pick up for a very long time. And the main reason because this thing has a lot of potential. Now you're thinking, what do you mean with potential? The Phoenix One is not only a very cool looking device, but when it comes to the specification, this thing has quite an interesting spec list. I wanted to pick up this thing for such a long time, absolutely. And yet, the reason I waited so long is very simple. I didn't know what to expect. And this is basically the main problem with AliExpress. On the box, we're not a lot of information, but also including when it comes to the, let's say, the, the website. There was no information whatsoever. But when you're looking at the box, there we're going to get one of those interesting things that I was talking about. So let's zoom in a little bit and we'll talk about the specification. This thing comes with a Snapdragon 6060 octa-core processor, 4 gigs of RAM, 32 gigabytes storage. But when you're looking at this, maybe it sounds old, because it is, but this thing had such an interesting spec list and you will see it back in the performance. But unfortunately, there was a downside to it. The Play Store is not available on this and that makes the thing very difficult to install. There was also no Emmy Alec for it because if that was possible, these were like absolutely crazy game boxes to get. But let's take a close look at the manual to begin with. Yeah, the same with the manual and the boxes. There is no English because this isn't marked basically on the European or US market. Yeah, so I really still want to pick it up just to see what are we going to get. So when you're looking at the case itself, I think the design is absolutely gorgeous. It comes with a little bit like the Nvidia Shield, only like Vibe, but only better. Like this thing weighs even more than Nvidia Shield, I can tell you that. The Phoenix one, really love it. So at the back we're going to get two USB ports. The one is in 3.0 and an old school one. RG45 input for the power supply in the HDMI function. So we get ourselves like a very nice high quality power supply. Everything is just way better. And that also includes for the remote. Because the remote is the same story. This thing comes with two AAA batteries. Oh man. Oh, I left the freaking batteries in, that's not good, but we're going to put them in back and we're going to use two the same battery brands, but we're also going to get ourselves the air remote, so when it comes to that, you can see like it's getting really close to the Nvidia Shield idea, and yeah, I can try to pull this out, but there's nothing underneath. Alright, so the only thing I'm missing is, where is my stand on this thing? Ah, there it is. Well, like, there was, that is another thing that I really liked about it. Yeah, let's put it in. Doop, 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 doop. Yeah. But what we don't need to forget is the controller itself that came with it. So like the NVIDIA Shield, I also get like the system, the remote and the controller, or better said, the first generation of the NVIDIA Shields. Nowadays with the pros, you don't get a controller anymore. But also this one comes with a Bluetooth controller and a very nice high quality one. I must say I was trying to use a different controller. It was a little bit of a bummer because I couldn't get any controller beside the Phoenix one to work. So we do have some limitations. So you're getting a great one, but you're limited to this one. But let's take a close look at the system itself and what it can do. So let's plug it in and let's have some fun. And what can we play when it comes to emulation performance? Another issue I noticed is the controller compatibility. It's just a freaking nightmare if you ask me. So the original Phoenix controller you're going to see over here, it works fine. But I did notice if you want to set it up with some emulators, there are some keys are not working or you can set it up. A little, little bit of a bummer in my opinion. But the weird thing is like I couldn't even get these two to work. Like the most common controllers that work basically on every freaking Android box. And that is also like a big issue. But here comes the fun fact. So I was digging around with last in my box itself with all the controls and I found this controller. And guess what? I have this old school controller laying around from the brand Grevis and it seems to be working just fine on the Phoenix one. I didn't do a full review about this product. In the future I will do so and test it out on multiple devices. It's a weird beefcake and really weird piece of hardware with this, yeah, I can say like analog D style weird thing. Nevertheless, I got this from a fellow collector, pretty cool, but it seems to only be working perfectly on the Phoenix One game system. That is just a big bummer. So when you're looking at the device cell, it also comes with a stand that was still in the box. Yeah, I wanted to show you just by putting it under it. It's nothing really special, but it's like the finishing touch when it comes to this device. It gives it a lot of stability, if you want to put it, of course, in this position, like the standing position. So basically what you're going to get with the Phoenix One kit is just the same thing that you're going to get with the older model of the Nvidia Shield. And what do you mean with the Nvidia Shield? The first edition also came with the Nvidia Shield controller. Nowadays with the Nvidia Shield Pro, you're only going to get the system itself and the remote and you need to buy the controller separately. But in overall, I was 
special, let's say, interested in this device itself because it looks nice, but how is it with the specifications? So let's take a close look at that and let's hook it up to my Elgato capture card. All right, guys, so what are we going to get with the interface? First of all, I think it looks really nice and smooth, but it does not like the Nvidia Shield. We don't have all the applications and it also includes when it comes to the Play Store. When you want to boot something up, you will get the message that you need to have a connection. And even if you have going to be in connection setup, I tried it with different boxes. It doesn't work at all because this is clearly made for Asian market. So when it comes to gaming and all the future, it's a little bit of a messy stuff, especially when you're looking at the menu and all the stuff you see. Most of the things doesn't even boot up when you're having internet. Then we're having like the option to install yourself some APK files. Also here I noticed some issues like some of the game emulators doesn't even boot up but I got a lot of them working so we could do some testing here on the channel. Alright so let's check the specifications with IDA64. So first of all the model is Phoenix One. What I do like about it we're going to get 4GB of RAM in this device. And we have a lot of internal storage total space. But it's a really old product, so that explains why we don't have 64 gigabytes, something like that. The Qualcomm Snapdragon 660 is a quite a beefy CPU, and that makes this thing just really cool when it comes to gaming. And for the GPU, we're going to get ourselves an Adreno 512. So and overall, this device, in my opinion, has quite some beefy specifications. Let's check the Android, and we're going to get Android 8. 0.1.0 called Oreo. Okay guys, so let's start with the emulation testing. First off, GameCube. And it depends what kind of game you wanted to play on this device in combination with the software Dolphin. Because we're going to get some mixed performance. But this game seems to be running just fine. And it's not having unstable 60 FPS. Sometimes it dips down. But in overall, it's playable if you ask me. But with GameCube, I think we are like already done with testing. So I tried Crash Bandicoot, a lot of different games, but only seems to be like the, some of the first generation games that I've shown you before will work fine. But like this is not running at all, or it should be. We're going to get this purple display every single time it's booting up. This part is not really demanding. You can see the FPS rises up to the 60. But when we're going to play the game, you can see it doesn't even hit the 30 FPS. And it makes this game just freaking slow and unplayable. And I noticed this, of course, with a more demanding game too, like F-Zero GX. That game was not even playable at all with 15 FPS. So when it comes to the GameCube, sadly, this device is not powerful enough. Alright guys, next up, PlayStation 1. But what I did change today is that we're going to have a higher internal resolution. And the reason is just simple. With the normal resolution, it runs just fine. Nowadays on Android boxes, with lesser power, we can run this. But I was thinking, what should we do when we're having like a beefcake of a system like this? Let's push it a little bit further. And you can see that it doesn't hit the 60 FPS. That's a little bit of a bummer in my opinion. And that is something we need to take consideration when you're having a system like this. So I wanted to try out two games. In this case, we're going to try out the first game. And you can see like when it's in game, we don't hit the 60 FPS. Of course, with a loading screen, we hit it, but that is more cheating. But let's try another game. Let's try R-Type Zelda and Shmup that is less demanding. Because you will see almost the same result. 56, 57 FPS, but when you're going to play, you will see that we're hitting the 60 FPS and having the full gameplay on this game. But when you're looking at the game as this, you can see that now it runs 60 FPS, 59, but I think it's just stable enough to enjoy this game. Having a two times the eternal resolution, it looks amazing on this Phoenix One. And you can see like where a lot of these other Android devices struggle getting this places one lifted up to a high resolution this phoenix one has no problem whatsoever so playstation one runs even with the two times resolution with some games okay next up sega dreamcast with the red dream emulator with a resolution of 640 by 480 and the reason i wanted to do it like this is just to see if we can run this game perfectly and 60 fps locked stable 
Of course, take into consideration that even the Redeem emulator has some games that are not compatible, but in the future they will highly possible fix this all. But like this game runs perfectly and we can play it on full speed on the Phoenix one without a hassle. So next up, still Dreamcast. I just wanted to check out and quickly a different game if you're going to get the same results. This game is also very well supported. And you can see over here that this game also runs on full 60 FPS without any problem. So the Phoenix one is compatible with the Dream in combination with the Dreamcast games. And I think it's a pretty cool addition. Okay, so for the final test, I wanted to test out PlayStation Portable with the PP SSPP emulator. And this device runs the PlayStation emulator quite well. So when it comes to Tekken, you can see this game runs on full 60 FPS. There is no frame skipping, no other tweaks. It's just set to the basic settings. And I must say that I was surprised to see that this piece of hardware can run one of my favorite games perfectly. I'm always trying Tekken 6, the reason because it's just my casual go-to game to play but also to test on these systems. And I noticed when you're looking at the low-end emulators, they all struggle with PSP in general. And with a beefy Phoenix one, with this Snapdragon 660, there is no problem whatsoever. So in the next test, we're going to try out Wipeout. For me, it's like the next level if Tekken 6 runs fine. With Wipeout, we're going to need some more power, so it's going to be the best test. Running now on 60 FPS stable, but when you can get an explosion, you can see it dips down for a couple of seconds. In my opinion, it's not a big of a deal, but I just wanted to show you that Wipeout doesn't run on 60 FPS stable when you're going to push it, especially when it comes to explosion and stuff going on. But then overall, it got quite some good performance, something you don't see on cheap boxes. The final test for PlayStation Portable and this box, of course, the God of War game on PlayStation Portable. And surprisingly, this game runs very good, but not perfect. You can already see that it's dipping down to the 50, and we're going to start playing, we see even dips up to the 40. And that is a little bit of a bummer, so you can see that this box is not powerful enough to run God of War on full speed. So in the next step, I want to add frame skipping to see if we're going to get some better performance. But when we are going to apply the frame skip on God of War, you're going to see that we're going to get a stable 30 FPS and makes this game, in my opinion, playable. So this is what you're going to get with the Phoenix one. For when it comes to the performance, PlayStation Portable is just still a mixed bag. It's just, it's just a little bit of a bummer. I wish we could play this game at least at the full speed. But yeah, when you're looking at the other games like GameCube and the really high demanding stuff, it still struggles with the tiny box with a Snapdragon 660. But okay guys, so when you're looking at the Phoenix one, it does have a lot of great specifications and it would be a pretty damn cool device if you can even use on Play Store and have like all the functionalities like a normal Android box. But unfortunately, that is not what's working over here. So this is what we're going to get. Let me know in the comments what you think of this. I want to thank you for watching. Consider subscribing, hit that little bell icon on the Wicked Family and it will be great to see you in the next video.